This is Susan Bassey, and shortly after the Santa Clara County District Attorney announced that he was going to criminally prosecute a number of Santa Clara Sheriff's deputies and members of the Apple's private security team related to a bribery scheme and a 2018 election involving concealed carry permits, I ran across this situation in the Apple headquarters parking lot. And when I started to record the sheriffs and what they were doing there, Apple sent over a number of employees and resources to obstruct the public view of what was going on. The right to record in public is absolute, as is the right to record police. Whether you're a cop watcher, a member of the public, or just a journalist working for a newspaper or television station. It's part of news gathering, and we gather up all the information, whether it's public records, public recording, or other information with public officials, and we disseminate it to the public, because that is the job of the free press. And when any private business, individual, or government agency obstructs that right, they are interfering or issuing what we call a prior restraint on speech. They are deciding what information we can get and what information we can't. In addition to our right to record in public, we have a right to public notice of public meetings and a right to attend those meetings, record them, and make public comment. And this is one such meeting at the State Bar of California where all the attorneys were discussing access and fairness to the courts. I have a few comments and a few observations. First of all, I noticed in the ro roll call in the beginning of the meeting that Judge Erica Yu was placed in the roll call. Her name does not appear on the document that is published. I was unaware that she was here. Um, I am going to audit some of these meetings, but if you're relying on the executive committee vote yesterday as rubber stamping all the work that you've done, but you've been in violation of the Brown Act and you haven't performed your duties properly as a commission, it would be the equivalent of void orders. You, your recommendations, your reports on which the executive committee relied could be highly problematic. Um, and I'm sorry if that is troubling to you, but that's how government works. Um, I also wanted to make a cu another couple of observations, and that is there has been a lot of um, back slapping over the inclusiveness of stakeholders, and yet when I listen to everybody's title, they have formal education and training in the law, they are judges, they are on judge commissions, judge associations, or they are members of the bar. That is not inclusive of stakeholders. Um, court users in family court specifically, Mr. James earlier said 70%. I believe the numbers specifically from uh, Tani Sakahui during her NPR interview on March 21st, 2018, said those numbers are closer to the 90%. So you're not including stakeholders. You don't have any members of the public other than some who didn't show up today. You haven't had input from the media. You haven't had input from people who sit in city government and know how to run public meetings. You haven't had any input from vexatious litigants who would be the polar opposite of your um, legal professionally trained people. And um, I, I think that you're missing the boat on that. So before you frame this, that you've done your job and that we're making changes over 25 years, the reason we're making changes over 25 years is because the state legislature has voted to, to do some serious things because the bar hasn't done a good job of protecting the public. And while we may never all agree on all the issues related to our government, we do understand the right to record the police and the right to public notice of meetings. 
which is why it was disturbing that we recently found that there had been a meeting going on in Santa Clara County for over 30 years, where police officers, lawyers, and judges were invited to a dinner meeting five times a year, and they discussed their views, opinions, and ideas without public notice, without the public being invited, and without any record of what they discussed. Are you Annie? I am. Annie, I'm Susan. Remember hi, I Susan. came here the other day for the Bar Bench Media Committee? Thank you. Oh, yeah, hi. Recently, I started covering a case involving the San Jose Mercury and one of their former reporters. Paul Gackle had called one of the Mercury reporters who reported on the courts, Robert Solanya, a shitty journalist, and he had written an op-ed in a competing paper, and when he did, he was slapped with a restraining order. The judge in that case, Carol Overton, disclosed that she had been on a bar bench media committee with the Mercury editor, and so I did some records requests to see what I could find out about this committee, because I was on the press list but had never heard of it. We found out that the committee came to Three Flames Restaurant. They came five times a year, and at the invitation of judges, private attorneys, government lawyers, police officers, judges, and reporters attended. They had off-record discussions about issues of public importance, and they discussed their opinions and ideas out of the public eye, even though the public was paying for the dinners, including dinners for the reporters who attended, and got to talk about what was going on in those meetings where the district attorney attended on a regular I basis. I know, and we were, so, we were prepared. Yes. Yeah, right. So this is the Three Flames restaurant where judges, federal and state, lawyers, private and government, police officers, and only invited reporters came five times a year and met for three hours. And they met in the back room back there. We're gonna go back and we're gonna look at where that room is. So this is the back room where they held the Bar Bench Media Police Committee five times a year, three hours each time, where they met off record and they had judges, police officers, lawyers, and reporters talking on the public dime and out of the public eye. Our records requests and our research show the following. These meetings happened over a period of 30 years. They were chaired by judges, and they were paid for by taxpayers out of the jury services and the grand jury budget. They had meetings five times a year that lasted three hours each time. They decided which judges to invite, which lawyers, and which police officers and reporters would attend. And when reporters were invited to give their opinions or ideas on matters of public interest, taxpayers paid for their dinners. They gave each other trophies and awards, and their meetings were not only not noticed to the public, they were not documented. All of the conversations that happened in those meetings over a course of 30 years were held off record, and the reporters who were there they wrote stories, and they issued reports in the newspaper and on television. Ninety percent of the time, the reporters who attended and had their dinners paid for by taxpayers came from the San Jose Mercury or NBC News, and the information that they provided to the public resulted in an impact of influencing juries and voters, and not all media were invited, and therefore there was a prior restraint on speech because news gathering was restrained, and we got only the information that the judges wanted us to get, the judges who sat on and attended this committee. <clears throat> that ruling was very wrong. Judges are public officials, and they may not always like what is said about them in public or in private, but they have no right to obstruct the public access to public meetings that taxpayers pay to fund. This is a sidewalk in between your two properties. It's private property. Apple owns. Apple owns it or they lease it? He just told me they okay, leased it. Please go back. It's private property. I heard you.
I can even call you an asshole in public and nobody can do anything about it. How can you kick somebody out of their house like that? Go eat a bag of dicks. We may not always agree with the speaker engaging in free speech, but we have to agree to protect their right to do so. Recently, the Santa Clara County District Attorney brought charges against the sheriff. Lori Smith was found guilty of public corruption. But given what we know about this secret bar bench committee and the fact that the reporters reporting on that were meeting in secret with judges and the district attorney when Lori Smith wasn't present and doesn't know what was said, makes it seem a little less fair. And fairness in our courts and fairness in our local government is perhaps the most important right that we all need to continue to fight for.